I'm gonna show you how to get your master sounding huge using only one plugin. And that plugin is gonna be Isotope's Ozone Elements. Most of the time, this plugin is being offered for free. So I think if you go over to their website, you can join their mailing list and they'll pretty much just send you a notification when it goes out for free. So check that out. Otherwise, it's an incredibly powerful plugin that's super easy to use. Before we jump into this thing, I want you to understand that your mixes should already be in a pretty even, nice sounding place before you ever even get to this step. In this step, you should only be focusing on doing those minor tweaks to anything that really stands out and to also be trying to achieve that loudness that you expect from a mastered track. So with that out of the way, let's jump into this thing. Okay, so as I mentioned, you wanna make sure that your mix is already kind of at a point where it's sounding even and balanced and you have most of the heavy editing completed. The master bus strictly reserved for making your track sound full and loud. So I've got a demo queued up here from one of my previous videos. Let's check it out. Okay, so from that, what we can hear is it already sounds pretty even, pretty balanced. What we want is to make it louder. Right off the bat, you can see that I was already peaking at about negative 1.5 decibels. Now that's already fairly loud. We wanna try to bring it up to about zero decibels or a little below that. I'll show you that in a minute. But basically most of the transient peaks are already starting to hit the ceiling. Keep in mind, this is already a heavy metal track, so there aren't a lot of huge dynamics in most of the song, but you can hear when you've crushed the song too much, and that's what we're gonna try not to do. So here we are, we've pulled up Ozone Elements. This is a very cool, very simple plugin, and it's really powerful. I've been using it for a couple years now, and it's pretty much all I've ever needed to make my tracks loud. The tools in this plugin consist of an equalizer, a stereo imager, and a maximizer, each of which is gonna help you fine tune those little bits that are gonna make your track sound nice, clear, and loud. Diving into the equalizer a little bit more, by default, this thing is set up to edit in stereo. Like I mentioned, you should already have most of your EQing done by this point, but it is cool to go through and see if you've missed any stray frequencies. A very cool way of doing that is to actually set this thing up in mid-side mode, which will allow you to edit the mids and the sides separately in order to really find those frequencies that are muddying up your stereo image. Let's go ahead and flip this over to mid-side and we're gonna sweep around and try to hear some frequencies that are maybe sticking out. A cool trick that you can do with this, if you hold Alt or Option and then click one of these nodes, it will actually solo the frequency band within that node. It's a pretty cool little trick. So let's press play on this thing, let's hear it sounds and let's try to find some frequencies. All I did there was try to find the woof of the kick so that I can maybe pump it a little bit so we can get a little bit more action in the low end. I tried to clean up some of the muddiness in the low mids and then just boost a little bit of that mid range so that the middle of this mix sounds nice and clear. Let's go ahead and hit the sides and see if we can't get a little shimmer out of this mix. Okay, so now we've done some basic moves in the EQ. We've got it to sound a little bit weightier in the bass and a little bit more shimmery in the top end. I think that sounds pretty cool. Let's go ahead and check out the stereo imager. So the idea of a stereo imager is to essentially try to create more width. However, 
Word of warning, do not go overboard with this because it will create not only phase issues, but it'll just sound terrible. So let's check out some of the stuff that this does here and see if we can't make this track sound a little bit fuller. The main thing that we wanna focus on here is this section right here. With this activated, what it's doing is giving you essentially a directional mixer of how the audio is flowing left or right. Let's press play on this track and let's see what it sounds like when we do some heavy moves with this slider. As you can see, it goes from very narrow to very wide sounding. The other option that we have here is called Stereoize, and what this is doing is it's actually creating a bit of a delay to give it sort of almost sort of a slap back effect, which is gonna give it space. I don't necessarily recommend this if you're doing heavy metal mixes because all that space is already pretty well taken up, but let's turn this on so we can hear what it sounds like. You can hear in there where the drums and that middle section starts to get really kind of delayed and slappy. Of course, I've got it set to some extreme settings. You can find some nice middle ground and make it sound good. But for me, when I use this thing, I've already done most of those effects in my mix and I don't really need to do them here. So I usually just keep that off and use just the widening. So again, I really didn't need to use a lot of this effect. I think I've already handled most of my stereo imaging in the mix itself, but it is nice to add that little extra touch right at the very end. Let's jump into the maximizer and make this track loud. All right, when we pull up the maximizer, you gotta know this thing is a limiter. So most of the controls that we're worried about in this thing live right here and it has to do with the ceiling and the threshold. The ceiling is the decibel limit that this plugin is gonna allow the audio to reach before it stops it completely. And the threshold is how deep into the dynamics we're gonna go to really squash this track against the ceiling. There are a few different little settings here that I think can be very useful, so they're worth playing around with. For instance, the IRC, this is the intelligent release control. There are two different sorts of automatic settings that dictate how fast or smooth the limiter lets go of the audio. IRC1 gives you a smooth and thick limiting for rich sound. This is probably something that I would use for more of a ballad, a slower song, something that's not really punching you right in the face. And then you've got IRC2, which is clear and sharp limiting to preserve peaks. It allows for those really sharp points to continue to stick out after you've squashed this thing with a limiter. There's really no way to tell you the best way to use this thing. You're just gonna have to use your ears, move that slider around, and try to find the best possible spot. Let's press play and let's squash this thing. As far as I'm concerned, that's pretty much all I would do to master this track. Considering I use the same setup in all of my songs and I use the same exact steps every single time, this is about all I would do. And I think that this sounds huge. So let's play this thing one more time. We're gonna A, B this plugin so that we can see how all the tools and ozone elements have helped us to really make this track sound big. There you have it, it sounds awesome. Some quick tips for those of you that are bouncing out your tracks to use for streaming and for social media. Here's a couple of things that I recommend you keep in mind. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your true peak is turned on. This is gonna help you automatically reduce clipping. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do is bring your ceiling down to negative one decibels. This is gonna give you enough overhead so that you're definitely not clipping and none of these platforms will then re-encode your songs. The last bit of advice is making sure that your gain reduction doesn't really exceed four decibels. That's as much gain reduction as you want. Let me show you that one more time. You can see there that we had, on average, about four decibels of gain reduction. In my opinion, this is a sweet spot. It sounds good. The track doesn't sound overly crushed. It doesn't sound like it's pumping too hard. It just has enough oomph 
that it feels alive. There are a lot of really, really powerful tools in this plugin. I implore you to go through it, check it out. Like I said, this thing usually pops up free every now and then, so keep your eye on it. I'll set a link down below that you can check out the Isotope website. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. I'm happy to give you a hand. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And until next time, peace.